This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and glad of that. And this is the MT Zion Cathedral Church, and we welcome you to our virtual online worship experience today. The vision of this house is that you know God, you discover purpose, you identify gifts, and you serve to make a difference. According to John 13 35, by this, well, all men know that you are my disciples by how you have loved one for another. John 10 and 10 says that he come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. This is a part of our worship where we go out of our way and we pass the Lord. So in the convenience of where you are, if there's all those around you within the social distancing parameters, will you just love on them to your left and to your right and just let them know that God has fixed it for us to be strong. Pastor Yvonne and the music team will lead us down in worship. God has fixed it for us to be strong. But being strong, it takes giving thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. The word of God, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Come on, come on. He's worthy. Yeah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. 
based on what God is uh, saying, and if you're able, where you want to honor the reading of His holy word to rest on uh, your feet, we want to make your house a sanctuary uh, right now, a place of dwelling. Let's make our faith confession. This is the word of truth. As I apply the principles that this word provides, I have the provisions that this word promises. I will receive teaching, that's information. I will receive preaching, that's inspiration. I will receive healing, that's implementation. What's required of me is my permission, my participation, and my expectation. As I give God all of these, my life is better. My life is better. My life is better. Let's read collectively from the writings of 1 Samuel chapter number 30, verse 6. It reads from the New King James translation, Moreover, David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of so many. For all the people were embittered, each one because of his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Our text or our general theme has been rooted in be strong. Um, my brothers and my sisters, a lot like uh, the prophetic voice of Bishop Neil Clarence Ellis, my father in the faith, uh, who has been instrumental uh, in navigating from a prophetic perspective of hearing God and saying what God is saying before it is seen. Um, he talked about uh, in the vision for 2020. Uh, this has been a year of spiritual isolation, uh, of spiritual uh, isolation to get to a point of spiritual insulation. So there's isolation to get to spiritual insulation. Uh, we've been discussing over these past weeks, and this will be the fifth lesson uh, of this particular teaching, and as we look uh, from a historical perspective, uh, the Bible uh, is divided in divisions. Uh, we have five books of uh, law from the Old Testament, 12 books of history, uh, five books of poetry, five major prophets, 12 minor prophets, four gospels, uh, one book of church history, 21 letters, and the book of Revelation, the book of Apocalypse. The Bible is divided in divisions. And so we're looking from the Old Testament context, from a historical perspective, we find ourselves perusing uh, the ninth book of the Bible known as 1 Samuel. It has 31 chapters, 810 verses, 24,473 words you will find recorded in this book. It is designed uh, from the purpose of showing us a paradigm shift uh, moving the people of God from the system of judges to now the system of kings uh, and to show us the lineage that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ would come through. Uh, we've been very intentional because now uh, the reality is uh, this is where the rubber hits the road, the rubber meets the road, uh, where uh, we're going to find out whether we're faithing it or thinking it. Uh, whether we're thinking it or thinking it. Now, you can't hide behind the pretense to say that you know God. It's going to be demonstratively seen whether we have real relationship with him uh, now, uh, uh, because now this airborne condition that 
uh, can't be seen, but it is felt and experienced, has affected uh, the physicality of man and the financial uh, abundance of man. Uh, this is warfare. And so I came to declare and to decree that we are at war. <laughs> Uh, and it's interesting that uh, those doctors and others, uh, Dr. Wilson and others from uh, Jefferson County Health Department, etc., have been echoing uh, consider or perceive uh, us being at war. And they often refer to uh, look at it from the perspective of this being World War II, uh, another war. And, and I began to think about this, and, and I realized that uh, 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 Paul reminds us in the book of Ephesians that the weapons of our warfare are not calm, but they are fighting for the pulling down of strongholds. And he tells us emphatically to put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to resist the wiles of of uh, the devil. And so now I've come uh, to remind us as we look at uh, the rest of this discourse to find out what happens uh, when you decide to be strong in the Lord. Because Ephesians 6 to 10 reminds us and it says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The first thing he tells us is what to do. This says be. Then he tells us how to be. He says strong. And then he tells us where we're going to get the strength to be strong. He says in the Lord. And then he concludes by saying, what does it look like once we become strong in the Lord? That word power in that text is the word kratos in the Greek and it means demonstration. So he says you're going to be able to demonstrate something that looks a little different than what others are presenting. And so now in the midst of chaos and in the midst of change and in the midst of crisis, we are supposed to look different. We are supposed to act different. We are supposed to stand different. We are supposed to speak different. We are supposed to look different. It's not that we're not facing what others are facing, but we already know the outcome. And the outcome is that we win in the end. Can you just feed the, uh, this thread where we win in the end? And so I'm going to use that as a subtopic to talk about being strong today. I'm going to use it as a subtopic today. Winning will no excuses. Winning will no excuses. Winning will no excuses. My brothers and sisters, uh, the reality of life's uh, journey is uh, winners win and losers lose. Winners win and losers lose. Uh, winners never look at uh, opposition from the perspective of losing. And losers usually never look at opposition from the perspective of winning. Losers usually have already accepted where there's opposition, there is no opportunity. But winners look at opposition as an opportunity to win differently. And this is the discourse of this lesson for today. It is not whether we are going to win, it is how we are going to win. Because God has a multitude of ways of helping us win against the odds. And so you have to see yourself Irregardless of what you're up against and irregardless of what's up against you, uh, I'm going to win in the end. And so our focus thought has been rooted in the importance of addressing this journey to victory, even when life seems to be overwhelming. And so my outcome is not going to change. 
but how I get there might have to change. I'll say it again, my outcome is not going to change, but how I get there might have to change. In other words, I'm going to win somehow, but I just might not win this battle the same way I won the last battle. I hear the saints of old saying each victory will help you some other to win. And so you've got to see yourself winning irregardless of the odds that you are up, up against or uh, the odds that are up against you. And so we're going to walk the rest of this out of, uh, if you will, come back with me to 1 Samuel uh, chapter number 30. It's 1 Samuel chapter number 30. And let's look at verses 9 and 10. Let's look at verses 9 and 10, and it says, So David went he and the 600 men who were with him, and they came to the brook of the soul, where they saved who were left behind. Mm, that's another whole message. I don't have time to work that. But verse 10 says, that David pursued he and the 400 men, but 200 stayed behind, who were so weary that they could not cross the brook of the soul. They could not cross the brook of the soul. Now, now, now the first thing that this text reveals uh, to us, uh, with Chris McClarence and my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, is that we have to assess if we're going to win uh, without any excuses. We've got to assess our part. We, we, we got to assess our partners, our uh, partners, partakers, those that uh, play a part in the success that you and I are to achieve. And, and, and now, remember, all of this is based off of a prayer. Uh, all of this is based off of a prayer. So the first thing that David did was he partnered with God in prayer. Okay, he partnered with God in prayer. Now watch this. The second thing that he did was he partnered with people. And the third thing that he did is that not only did he partner in prayer, he partnered with people, but he was a uh, 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 partnering with a proclamation. Okay, come here, let me see. Can we? He partnered with God through prayer. Okay, he partnered with the 600 through uh, pursuing. But then lastly, he partnered with uh, a proclamation. Okay, He partnered with the word. Okay, come here. Let, 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 me, let me help you uh, see it uh, the way I see it so that we can see it together. Uh, David now, remember where we left off, he was in the pursuit. He started off the cost. The first lesson we talked about uh, is that we talked about the cost of leadership. Because now you can't just be willing to be a leader when things look well. You've got to be able to endure when things don't look so well. Uh, but the second lesson we talked about was his posture. He went from being kingly to being priestly. The third lesson uh, we did, he talked about the prayer that he prayed. Uh, he inquired of the Lord and asked the Lord some questions, and the Lord gave him three answers. And, shall, shall I pursue these troops, and, and will I overtake them? And God's response, pursue, you will overtake them, and without fail, recover all. And so last week we talked about the pursuit. We talked about the pursuit, and, and now in the climax or the conclusion of these lessons, uh, we, we we're talking about winning with no excuses. Uh, my brothers and sisters, what I found out that when you partner with God, God is obligated to give you whatever is necessary for you to win. I, I said when you partner with God, God is giving you whatever is necessary in order uh, for you to win. Please get that in your spirit. Uh, but whenever you partner with God, you have whatever is necessary in order for you to win. When Moses and the children of Israel came up uh, to the Red Sea, he told them, what is it that you have in your hand? Uh, uh, when, when, when Jesus was doing mega ministry on uh, a minor budget, uh, he asked them, what do you have? Uh, what do we have to feed them with? And they said, this little young boy, all he got is two fish and five barley loaves of 
operated. Uh, you have what's necessary in order uh, to win. God is responsible when Elijah uh, made the bold statement to stand up and say, hey, you've been going against God with Jezebel, with uh, your, your prophets and prophetess, and, and, and so for three years and six months, no rain will proliferate on the earth. And, and, and God made sure he had everything that he needed. God made a dirty bird bring clean food to feed him three times a day. And then he moved them from one place to another because the brook dried up and sent him to a widow's house that had a little meal and a little cake and a little water and made him a meal. God is always responsible for providing whatever is necessary for you to win when you partner with him. And so no matter what the odds are, no matter what the difficulties might appear, to be, I'm telling you, uh, uh, what the vaccine, he might use it that way, or he might divinely, miraculously just allow people to recover. I don't know how he's going to do it, but what I do know, I know his history. God has a historical way of, of always showing up and demonstrating that if you partner with me, you're going to win in the end. And so the partners, first of all, he partnered with God through prayer. Secondly, he partnered with people, the 600. And then lastly, he, 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 he partnered with a proclamation. What is it? David is making a move, not off of visible evidence, but off of a word from God. Okay, you missed it. The proclamation was God said to him that you can go after these truths. You're going to overtake them. But the proclamation was without fail, recover all. And so based off of the word, oh, y'all missed it, man. That's enough to get, get us going right there. Listen, if I got a word from God, that's all I need. Because now, throughout Scripture, God's word cannot return to him empty. It must accomplish that which it has been sent out to do. Uh, somebody say, I just need a word from God. I just need a word from God. I, I just need one word from from God. And if I get this word from God, no matter what it is, and no matter how it is, I hear the song says the grass withered and the flower faded, but the word of God shall stand forever. The word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against a deal. And so now it is important to you, and it's important to me, is that, 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 that whatever it is being proclaimed, is it what God said, we ain't got to make that known. We don't have to try to prop a lie, uh, but just say what God is saying or has said. God's word still works. And my brothers and sisters, I must be honest with you, because now this is a season where without audiences uh, to cheer us up, to pump us up, you got to be sure and very sure uh, that the rock that you're holding on to is the solid rock uh, that cannot fail. And so for me, uh, for the audience or uh, without an audience, this word uh, is what I've been living off of. Uh, and so all I know uh, is how to take God at his word. Uh, we've been standing in a few days. It will be 20 years as the pastor of one church now in two different locations. Uh, but in the midst of it, all I had was a word uh, from the Lord. It's the word that keeps you. It's the word that sustains you. It's the word that heals you. It's the word that provides for you. It's the word that protects you. It's the word that should lead us. We need a word from the Lord. And so now as we are traveling this road and moving in the direction of destiny, we got to flock together. <laughs> because words are forever flock together. We're going to find out who's faking it and who's faking it now. Because now, uh, he says, it's impossible to please him. Yes, man, I sense it. Without faith, first you must believe that he is God and he is a rewarder 
of those that diligently uh, seek him. Now, the reality of verses number 9 and 10, it says he started off with 600, y'all. And so I, 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 I'm a student. I'm a student of the word. And so now it messes with me a little bit because now God don't waste words. So this 600, it meant something. 600 in biblical numerology is the number of warfare. So, so, so when David started off, he started off understanding we're in warfare. Okay, okay, okay. The enemy is not voluntarily returning to you what he's stolen. So you and I must understand uh, we got to pursue. That, that word pursue, uh, when David said, when he says, shall I pursue? In other words, it is the word rodat in the Greek, in the Hebrew, and it means to run after. It means to chase it. Okay? Now, I'm not chasing anything that I don't believe I have the ability to acquire. One. But I'm not chasing anything, uh, watch this, that I don't believe uh, belongs to me. Okay? On one side, I'm trying to get uh, what I don't have. Uh, on the other side, I'm going after what already belongs to me. Oh, I wish y'all could catch that industry. See, now, what, what, if I got what some of what he said, uh, then, then, then now if somebody takes that, then I have the right to go get it back because uh, it was given to me. But now on the other side of it uh, is that if I'm going after it, if I'm pursuing what I've never had before, uh, then now I'm facing it off of God, making it available. Okay? And so one deals uh, with availability, and the other side of it deals with being already acquired. There's some things I already have, but I don't have everything that he's made available, so now I must take on the posture of being willing to pursue uh, and go after it. And so now, once he's given you and I the green light to go get it, how many of you are ready and willing, based off of partnering him in the prayer, partnering with the right people, and then lastly, being able to partner based off of what was proclaimed. I'm going after it. And now, when, when we, 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 the, the, the issue in some regards is that we've got to be going after it in the same direction. Okay? Because a house divided against itself. A family divided against itself does not have the ability to stand. Amos 3 and 3 says, uh, uh, can we walk together except we be agreed? And so now, the, 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 the partnering, uh, from that perspective, we have to be after the same thing. Same thing, same thing, same thing. So we partnered with God in prayer. He partnered with the 600. Now watch, six or 600 means warfare. But then it says that uh, 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 in those verses that it went from 600 to 400. 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 Now, I, 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 I'm a student of strategy. I'm a student of strategy. I'm a student of system. And so now I'm analyzing this because now uh, David doesn't change his pursuit because the numbers change. Oh, come here. Come here. Come here. It, it, the, no, they lost. Now, you got to catch this because the word truth in this, it, it means a company of robbers. Okay, a company of robbers. Okay, now, uh, 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 David uh, has warriors that now are pursuing robbers. Oh, no. okay. Ephesians 6 tells us that we're supposed to be warriors because he says, put on the whole armor. Of God. So now we can't just be worshipers. We also have to become warriors. 
Okay? David is going after it with what? Now, I, I, I don't want you. I don't want you to miss this. I don't want you to miss this because now uh, he 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 he's come in from that. He gets in from battle, and everything that was familiar to him is gone. Who has come in from battle with him? Other boys. Okay? All right? Now, who has come while they were gone? Because real warriors don't fight you behind your back. They fight you in front of your face. But perpetrators like the devil, his imps and his whips, they try to get you when you appear to be more fun. You appear, oh, I'll teach you better than you're acting. You appear to be weak. Now, 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 so, 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 now, watch what he does, because the second thing that we've got to look at, let's look at these verses. Let's look at uh, verses 11, uh, 11 on down. Verse 11 says, Then they found an Egyptian, y'all see that? In the field, brought him to David, and they gave him bread, and he ate. And they let him drink water. Verse 12 says, And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. They feed him good. So when he had eaten, his strength came back to him. Oh, Lord. For he had eaten no bread or drank water uh, from three days and three nights. Verse 13 and 14 uh, says, Then they said to him, to whom do you belong, and where are you from? And he said, I am a young man from Egypt, servant of the Amalekite. And my master left me here, because three days ago I fell sick. He made an invasion of the southern area of the, Cher of the Cherodites, uh, in the territory which belongs to Judah. And of the southern area of Caleb, and we burned Ziglag with fire. Verse 15 and 16, and David said to him, can you take me down to this troop, to this company of robbers? So he said, swear to me by God that you will neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will take, down, take you down to the troop. Verse 16, and when he had fallen down there, there was spread all over the land, eating and drinking and dancing. Eating, drinking, and dancing. Eating, drinking. They're having a party, y'all. Because of the great fall which they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. We conclude with verse 17 from this point. Uh, and verse 17 says, And David attacked them from twilight until the evening of the next day. Now a man of them escaped, except 400 young men who rode on camels and fled. Let, 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 let's unpackage this. Let's unpackage this. So the first thing that we realize is that we need a part. We've got to have the right part. We got a partner with God in prayer. We got a partner with the right people. Uh, and, and we got a partner with what's being proclaimed. See, I've got to hold on to his word even when uh, it hadn't been performed in my life. Uh, I've got to be able to hold on to his word even when it hadn't been performed in my life. Yet. So the second thing is that uh, uh, there's a process. And this is where it gets sticky, uh, or interesting, uh, so to speak, because now I've got to trust the process in the absence of the proof. Okay? Uh, I've got to have the right partners. And in between partners and our last one proof, there is the process. Okay? And, and so this is where we must do better at exposing, explaining, and empowering people to know, trust the process. Uh, this process uh, says that now I'm on this journey, and now I started with 600, I'm down to 400. 400 in biblical numerology is, watch this, uh, known as uh, the divine uh, 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 perfect period. Okay, the divine perfect period. Let, let, let me give you, let me give you the first mention of it so that you'll understand what I'm saying. The law of first mention tells us in uh, Matthew.
Matthew, excuse me, Genesis chapter 15, verses 12 and 13, uh, that God now has promised Abraham, and he says that, 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 that for uh, 400 years, uh, your children, your descendants, shall be in bondage, but when they come out, they'll come out with great possessions. Okay, somebody say, uh, we got to come out with great possessions. And so now, what happens when it went from 600 to 400, 600 warfare, 400 of the divine period, of the divine perfection period. Okay, okay. In other words, uh, when, when, when we come out of this, uh, we're going to have the spoils uh, of what we've acquired in the midst of this. Okay. In other words, uh, when I come out of it, the process says uh, I've got to have more to show uh, than what I had uh, before I went in it. Uh, but I've got to trust the steps, uh, the stages, and the places. Uh, even though it doesn't look good, even though it might not feel good, uh, I trust the process. He promised to never leave me, nor will he forsake me. I've got to trust the process. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. I've got to trust the, the process. He's Apple and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I've got to trust the process. So now God's word is on it. So now I've got to trust this process. And so from verses 11 to verse 17, it gives us a picture, a, a picture of the process. Can I tell you what the process is? The first thing when you have process, regroup. What, what, what he did was he regrouped. Okay? Uh, the second thing, watch this, refocus. Okay? And then the third thing will return. Okay? Okay, come down. Let, let me see if I help you. The process is simple. When, 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 when I'm in a fight, okay, the first thing I've got to do uh, is look at what I got to work with. Regroup. Look at So now I don't have 600. I got 400. So I'm regrouping. Okay? So I'm going, I'm going with the ghost. Uh, uh, Apostle Hilliard says, uh, go with the ghost. See, don't get caught up in the wheat, the whining, uh, and the woman. Okay, get caught up in the worshipers of the workers and the warriors. Okay, somebody that's going to worship, somebody that's going to work, and somebody that's willing to go to war. And so what David did not do, it does not show us anywhere in this passage that he won. It doesn't show us anywhere yeah. in this passage he retreated. But it shows us that David retreated. Y'all stay over here. But I'm going with those that remain. Somebody said, you've got to regroup. But then, David shows us is that he refocuses. Because initially, when he was going, he did not know exactly where he was going. And so God has a way of using your enemies to help you. Touch somebody and say, neighbor, I, I, I want you to know that God will even use your enemies to help you. Because this Egyptian servant, it was not happenstance, but God's master plan has factored in all the intangible. The things that we can't see that's working for our good. And he uses this Egyptian servant to be able to point them in the, the right direction. I thank God for every enemy. I thank God for every foe. Because God has a way of using those that are against you to work. For you, I'm so glad that the process says that now, not only did he regroup, he refocused, but then he returned. Can you talk to yourself and say, I shall return? I understand that I've had a few seasons that the odds have looked like it was over for me, but then I realized that God's word cannot fail. And so no matter if I have to go back over step one, two, and three again, to get to step four and five, whatever I gotta do, I'm gonna stick with God's process. Let's 
How can I be selfish with what the Lord has allowed us to conquer? And my brothers and sisters, as the spoils of this land, discrimination after 400 years of slavery, <laughs> abundance. We're in the period of the divine perfection. We are supposed to get the spoils of the land. It's time to possess. And so sometimes God has to use different methods, allow different things to happen. I, I don't believe God caused this. I do believe God allowed this. Yes, yes. But it's to get us back to some of the biblical, tr biblical truths that we strayed from. Will we present the same way? without a congregation full of people. When we serve him, when there's so much uncertainty, that's all around. And man, I made up my mind. I've come too far with them to start tripping on them now. All I know is I trust God. And I know his word Cannot lie. Heads of our eyes are closed for leaders of prayer. God, again, we thank you now for your word and work of wonders in our world. We thank you for teaching us how to win with no excuses. Woo! My, 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 my. We need you. We need you. We need you. Show who you are. Demonstrate your power. And we'll give you the glory. We'll boast in your goodness. Thank you now, God, for lining up the right partners. <laughs> for going through this process. And God, we know that the proof, yes, will be under now. Give you glory and thanks. For exceeding our expectations. Now saturate us with your words. That when we can't see our way, we trust what you say. In the midst of it all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Play, man.
and the book of me. And so sometimes if we're not careful, religion can become a hindrance to relationship because religion can be caught more in its rituals and its routine than relating us to him and him to us. And so the Bible says that if I would confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, I'll be saved. But with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, and with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And so my brothers and my sisters, the, 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 the reality, the responsibility, the charge that we have is to be relational. I've got to uh, acknowledge who he is and confess my name. Uh, he's Lord. He is supreme. He's superior. He is the one that knows all. He is the one that is everywhere and wherever at the same time, and he has all power. I'm acknowledging that I missed the mark. I messed up. And in order to get straight, I need help. And I'm so glad that he's a willing help to lead me from earth to glory. The old saints say, let Jesus lead you all the way. The second opportunity for connection is for those that have been like me. I'm a church boy. I was drawn to church. Uh, I've been in church all my life. I know the church. And yet in the midst of it, I strayed from God. But then I read where Isaiah reminded us that all of us have been like sheep that have gone astray. And because you're strayed, don't mean you have to stay. You can return and be restored. Because when you return and be restored, he says he'll remove our sins as far as they the east is from the west, never to bring them up again. You can return to God. You can be restored to God. He not only gets you back in line, but he doesn't put you at the back of the line. You can come back, my brother, my sister, my son, my brother. Last day, if you're in need of a residential place of worship, for the scripture declares, for Satan not the assembly of ourselves together. It is something that happens when we are able through technology in order to corporately gather. It's something that happens that uh, pleases God and it helps his people. So he says, for Satan not the assembly of ourselves together. And that's the reason it is so important even in these trying times to attempt to keep some level of normalcy. And so we, we, we're doing it the way that uh, we're doing it so that you can still have a feel, still have a sense of the worship experience that we normally would have corporately uh, together. And I want to thank those that have reached out and said how much they appreciate uh, the work and the effort that is going forth. So team, people are appreciating all that you all are doing to help keep a level of continuity and consistency in our effort. We want to thank our mayor and our uh, city council and all of our uh, representatives uh, from the various districts uh, for allowing us uh, to make sure that we can still uh, have some uh, level of normalcy as it relates to the church culture of uh, the world. And so we thank God for uh, that. But if you're here, if you just would respond uh, on this timeline, uh, one of uh, my team members uh, will respond to you. If you're in need of a relationship, you need to return and be restored you're in a need of a residential place of worship. Now, this is a part of the worship experience, and I want to thank uh, the M.T. Zion family, both at Birmingham and Huntsville, you all have been uh, phenomenal uh, thus far in this transitional period of using the online platform uh, that we have to be able to communicate uh, with one another. And I want to appreciate you. Some of you have brought your gifts uh, to the church. Uh, some of you have uh, gotten on the cash app, uh, uh, the Give the Five platform, and you're using those platforms exceptionally well. If you're in Birmingham uh, and you're using the cash app, it's M Zion CC. M Zion CC, if you're using the cash app for our Huntsville location, it's M Zion 
HSV. It's enzyme HSV. If you're using Giblify, it's gil.mtzcc.net. Thank you, thank you, team. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, because Wednesday, it was a long, uh, long, amen. I told you, I got some creative folks on my team. They fix this. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's gil.mtzcc.net. Amen. Amen. And so we we'll appreciate you. And for those that are giving uh, to support our efforts, uh, because we are not on payroll, and so my cash app should be uh, up there as well. Uh, it's Bishop uh, A.M. Moore. I think that's it. Uh, Bishop A.M. Moore. Uh, it's the cash uh, app tag uh, for that. And so we're going to make sure uh, that we continue to do the great exploits that we're doing on behalf of the kingdom and with your support and help, um, we will be able to do exactly, exactly that. So we thank you again uh, for tuning in uh, to our worship experience, and hopefully um, this has been helpful. Uh, but you've got to go back and study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly divided, correctly divided the word of truth. And so you're going to win with no excuses. You got to have the right parts. You got to go through the process. And you got to expect the proof to be your reality. Again, this is Bishop L. Moore, and this has been the MT Zion Cathedral Virtual Church Experience. As we close, repeat after me we are great people. We have great power. We lead to get great proof. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, sweet communion of this precious spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us hence now and forevermore. God bless you. God keep you. Here's our prayer.